One of the best stories I forgot to tell with Georgie because he didn't want me to embarrass him was Georgie was hammered one Sunday in the afternoon. And uh, what, what, I don't get a fucking pen here. I, I, I get to fucking do this by myself here. What do you got there? Oh, you got a little pen. There's a boy. There you go. Now we just drank a little 100 milligram quickies oh. to get the day started. It's 9 a.m. We're already making it happen. <laughs> you hear that, you cocksuckers? That's out of respect for you motherfuckers for listening to the show. Anyway, back to the show. Story with George. It's a Sunday. <laughs> I'm holding on to like a fucking strong $19. <laughs> I got nineteen dollars and I can't budge. I can't even bump into a nickel. The reason why I needed that, all I needed was five or ten dollars more to go into the city. I could walk over, get a bag of dope, maybe eat some Cuban food. It's fucking Sunday. I deserve it. I don't want to eat a Wendy's burger. I'm better than Wendy's. But we eat a Wendy's burger on a fucking Sunday. So I get up. I do my thing. I don't have no no car sales that day. I'm not doing anything. And no, uh, the, the what, what era we're going to talk about now is 93. We're going to pretty much end in 93. But uh, I lived with George in Cliffside Park. And I used to work six days a week. And on this Sunday, I had off. I wake up. I eat breakfast somewhere. And I come back. And George is laying on the fucking couch like a zombo. And uh, I'm sitting there, and there's a lady who lives upstairs. Not a good-looking lady. Not even a nice lady. She's kind of a prick. She was always a prick to me, you know, like always said mean things. I I knew her and Grandma were at war. So if you're at war with Grandma, you're at war with me. <laughs> so I see her outside grilling with her kids. And I go, if she's outside grilling, her purse is upstairs unguarded. So I run upstairs, and sure enough, the fucking front door is open because I don't know what you people are thinking. You lock every door. I don't give a fuck if you go to the bathroom. You lock the door. I open the door, and there it is. Sure enough, a fucking pocketbook with a purse sticking out of it with cash. So I take the fucking cash, put it in my pocket, close the door, and I run down the stairs, and I go in the room like nothing. Now, I know they're going to blame George. I I fucking know this that they're gonna blame George. I take the fucking money. I count that it's eight bills. I count that I take it downstairs to the basement and I hide it. And I go back upstairs and I just wait. And sure enough, within the hour, we open the door and it's the lady. Where's George? Somebody stole my money from my apartment. I I know it was him. There was a television missing about a year ago. I knew it was him, and it wasn't me either. I wasn't even living there a year earlier. So the grandma, George's grandma, was like, what, what are you accusing my grandson of stealing your money? And she's like, yes, he stole my money. You know, I'm calling the police. And grandma says, call the police. George, George. And George is getting up out of a fucking deep haze. He doesn't know anything. <laughs> she goes, you, you steal that money? And George is like, I just woke up, grandma. What the fuck are you saying? I've been asleep. Ask Coco. Coco was there with me. And I'm like, yeah, I'm just waking up myself. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? I was already showered. I made believe I was taking a fucking nap. So now the cops come. The cops are getting involved. They pull George outside. They pull Grandma outside. I'm sitting on the couch fucking. <laughs> I'm fucking watching the sports baseball like nothing happened. <clears throat> and all of a sudden. The cops leave. Grandma comes back in. George comes back in. George was so, so out of it, he didn't realize what had been really even missing. I waited about an hour. I went downstairs. I put my best shirt on. I went downstairs. I got that 800. I took a cab to the fucking sub, to the, to the bus station. <laughs> I took the New York bus. I took the A train down. I took this girl out to dinner. I had this little relationship going on with this little girl from Boulder. She was a waitress at the comedy club. I'm, so, boom, I come back that night. I feel guilty. I stop. I get a couple grams of tootsaloots, whatever. I get some cash. And I throw George like 
of a hundred. But I never, ever say this to him, that I robbed that lady. So years later, me and George reconnect like in 2000, 99, 98. And I go, George, what's going on? And then he go, you know, I go, George, remember the day the lady came and uh, she said that you robbed him. And he goes, he looked at me weird because he knew, he goes, it was you. I go, yeah, it was me. You knew I robbed him. So we're laughing. He go, you know, he's like, I took the fucking blame. She broke my balls for years after that. Blah, 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 blah. Flash, fast forward to about six months ago. It's a Friday night. I'm in the town. I don't know what town I'm at. I'm about to go on stage. And the phone rings. And it's George. And I could. You, that's why I don't text. That's why I don't text. Because I want to hear your voice. When I picked up the phone, I could, from the sound of his voice, I could hear that his face was pale. <laughs> and I go, George, what's the matter? And he goes, you're not going to believe this. I'm at this bar on Cliffside, and this young girl sitting next to me. And one thing starts to another. I start talking to the bartender, and I told her I grew up on Inwood Terrace. And then she says that she grew up on Inwood Terrace also. And I asked her where she grew up, and she told me the address. And I go, hey, that's my address. And she goes... Yeah, I lived in that building upstairs from you, you and your grandmother. In fact, I remember your grandmother. She goes, we moved after we got robbed. So George turned pale. He told the chick, thank you. <laughs> and he called me right back. And he goes, fucking 27 years later, that robbery still fucking haunts me. Anyway. Anyway.